Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Sorry, I'm a few seconds late. I was painting. And you know sometimes when you're painting and you get kind of stuck in and you can't take a break or you forget what time it is? Hey, Douglas. Hey, Darlene. Hey, Jules. Uh, my name's Tamara Grand. This is No Brush Required, episode 79. And uh, I'm going to grab Barbara. Hopefully she's here. She's got some exciting stuff happening. She can tell us about in just a minute. How are you, Douglas? Is your snow gone? Ours has just about finished melting. Barb, where are you? Barb. I'll invite you again. <laughs> it's been kind of a chaotic morning. <laughs> she and I have been texting back and forth about whether she's going to make it or not because of things that are happening at her end and uh we wanted to chat regardless it's snowing where are you rhonda are you pacific northwest or are you farther inland barbara send me a, a request send me a request if you're here i've invited you twice she has a lot of things going on today back there it's snowing here no snow but soggy she's not able to join barbara you're not able to join remember what you do Whoop, out and come back in oh Rhonda, toronto i saw some really cool imagery um on the lake from the lakefront this morning with uh ice and really cool ice cracks and things and i i guess it's probably not safe to skate not cold enough to skate there we had some skating on local ponds and things in vancouver area last week because it got really cold and snowy and it's all warmed up now hi marnie hey val hey melody well i'm not sure if barb's gonna make it not on the water yeah <laughs> it's kind of a big body of water to get cold enough to freeze isn't it all right um i'm gonna get going if barbara's not gonna pop on I don't want to. I don't want to spoil her surprise. She has a some. I don't want to jinx her either. She's got some exciting stuff going on at home. Anyways, if she manages to catch up with us today, if she can pop in in a few minutes, she will. Otherwise, I'm going to just get to it. Today we have a guest, um, a guest uh, artist who neither Barbara and I have met in real life, but we feel like we've known her for a long time. She has been a friend of the show. She's here lots and lots of Tuesdays. Um, and I met her through an online workshop with Rob, Rob Zott and Barbara's unable to join. I don't know what's going on, Barbara. And um, Barb and uh, our guest overlapped, not maybe not overlap, but at least have the same CVP, um, Creative Visionary Program background. So I'm gonna grab Darlene, Darlene Laguna, and uh, see if she wants to come. Oh, I've got Barb too, and I'm gonna, do two things at once and we'll see what happens we've never done this accepted two screens at the same time hello oh my lord <laughs> and there's still better <laughs> all right at the same time charlie i'm Great. so glad that worked one never uh, knows so, i know i know um quickly do you have anything to announce barb no, no okay nothing. Well, no, nothing, nothing official okay. to announce yet. We just, we just put in a, I don't know if you told people what was going no. on. We just put in a second offer for a new place and um, had to get the paperwork signed. So I knew I would be a couple minutes late. So I'm just trying to lower my heart rate down <laughs> to a more, you know, sensible yes. level. And, and all good. is good. <laughs> So we keep our so, fingers crossed that this gets accepted. So absolutely. Yeah. So you two haven't met before. Darlene and I had a lovely chat last week. Uh, Darlene, Barbara, Barbara, Hi. Darlene. Nice to Barbara. meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> it's like we know you already, though. Yeah. Well, that, that's good because I feel like I know you, and like I said in our chat last week, it just feels so one-sided sometimes. So it's um, really nice to connect with people either this way or actually even better in person. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. And you're in some sunny, sunny <clears throat> Southern California. Sunny Southern California in the city of Orange, um, okay. which is near Anaheim, <clears throat> um, where Disneyland is. Yes. Oh, the yes. easiest identifier. 
Right. Yeah. And you're near some other people we know. You're near Isabel. Right. You're near um, Carrie. You've been into LA to visit Rob Zott's oh. studio, which we're jealous yeah. about. Wow. Yeah. On um, also um, Amy Bonham. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And um, Lynn Welker at Sandstone Gallery in oh. um, Laguna Beach. So they're close. Uh, Joyce, Joyce Legate. I, you know, the name is familiar, just like so many of these artists' names are familiar, but I have not met her, I don't think. You're in a real hot spot for yeah. art. Well, you, are. you know, it kind of feels like that, but it doesn't feel like that personally, you know. Um, I do get to, you know, touch base with certain, you know, some of these people sometimes, but at the same time, there's so many people here, and there are so many little cities, and it's you know, hard to actually really connect with people sometimes. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. um, tell us and tell our viewers uh, what you make. Tell us about your art. Okay, well, well I, um, um, most of my art is landscape oriented because I do a lot of hiking. We have some really nice uh, regional parks in the area. And um, it's kind of like the foothills of some local mountains. And so I have a lot of really wonderful views and a really a lot of really great opportunities to be out in nature on the trail. Yeah. And so it really all started for me when I started um, taking photos. And once my, my three sons were middle school, high school, I had free time. And so I started hiking and, and that was when cell phones, you know, had a camera in my pocket yeah. and yeah. started taking photos. and um so yeah so that led into my art so would you yeah. bring your photos home and use those as a jumping off point for paintings uh, well, or is it all kind of in I, your head and yeah yeah first of all i just started playing with photography mm -hmm. um but then that, i got really tired of that quickly because i i it's all on the computer now mm -hmm. yeah you know so i don't want to spend you know spend my life uh looking at the screen yeah. um and I also started to develop some vestibular problems, which made spending too, ha having um, too much screen time be a problem. I would get motion sickness from toggling between the screens and stuff like that. So um, I thought, well, what can I do? How can I bring it off the screen? So yeah, that's when I started playing around. But I really, you know, I've always liked art. I was, as a child all through high school, I took art classes and, um, you know, had a lot of support, but never really considered doing it as more than a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I really didn't know what I was doing, but then I found a local class um, with a teacher who became a good friend of mine, Janine Brown, and um, it was just a local class, and I learned about just so. Yes. <laughs> I learned so. about <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I learned about acrylic paints. I learned about you know, layering, um, all the basics, learned about making papers and doing collage. And it was yeah. just like, wow. Yeah. You know, what, you know, so, so then I started working my photography into my art and I learned, um, you know, just printing it out on paper and putting it on a board and adding paint and stuff like that. And, mm. Um, Do you mean like collage? Or photo image yeah, yeah, collage. And then I learned about photo image transfer, you know, all these little things. It's just this, um, this whole dimension, yeah. you know, really. And uh, yeah, so then I was online and I found Nick Welton and, you know, at first it was like, oh, I could never do CVP. That's way too expensive. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's that's way beyond what anything I could spend my money on, you know. Um, but yeah, then in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two is when I did CDP. I'm not sure when you did it, Barb. I did it. I'm it's so bad. I'm so bad with remembering exactly. But I think I must have done it in two thousand nineteen. Um, and that that was my first time. And then I did it. I did sign up two more times. But I have to say the first time for me had the most profound influence um, and, and the most profound impact on, on my art and just the way that I approach things. Because I, I didn't have a clue before that. So sounds like you were after me or maybe in, when I was doing my repeats where I kind of played yeah. hooky a lot. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, and for any viewers out there who don't know what we're talking oh. about, because this always happens. This Somebody always says, happens. What is CVP? Yeah. CVP is the Creative Visionary Program. It's a 12 week intensive online art class um, by a California artist named Nicholas Wilton. And if you guys follow Art to Life, if you get his newsletters, his, you watch the podcasts, there's a lot of great information yeah. out there. And he'll probably be gearing up for his free breadcrumbs Ooh, course like anytime. Now. Now. Yeah, it's usually around, Valentine's it's usually February, isn't it? Yeah. So it's always, it's I think it leads time. into CVP. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's anybody out there who's looking for, you know, all the free courses that we'll be starting, the little taster courses, watch out for that one because I think I've done that every year for the last five years and not taken the full course, mm -hmm. but still managed to get a lot out of that week that he mm -hmm. offers. So yeah, he offers a lot of free information. So. And it, it just reminds me about how much I love this artist community and that everybody is so generous. There's not really a sense of competition mm -hmm. uh, and everybody's friendly. It's really pretty remarkable, I think. Yeah, I yeah. have to say, I, I tend to agree that that community, that artist community is unlike any other. Um, just so generous. And we've met some amazing people. We have. Through CVP. And I think we've had, we've had Nick on. We had Nick on a couple of years ago. Two years ago, maybe? Yeah, I can't It would have been like now, maybe two years ago, we did it right mm -hmm. before we launched CVP. So just, yeah, a tremendous community. So can't say enough. Now, were you, I don't know if I missed this in the introduction because I flew in late, but were you always a painter or did you do something before you got into photography and then Oh, painting? yeah. I, I've had many lives. <laughs> yeah. We all. So, we're all like that. Yeah. yeah, we are, we are I know, all like cats. By this time in our our life you know a lot has yeah. happened but yeah no for me like I said um, as a kid I really liked art a lot and you know had a lot of support from my family I was the youngest of six kids I grew up in Akron Ohio and um, when I went off to college it was like I just sort of left art behind for a while but I've always been interested in going to museums I always sort of yeah. kept my hand in it um, and yeah so and, and then there was like a drought of art making, you know, um, yes. college. Um, then I moved to California because I had a sister here and it was like after college, what am I going to do? So um, I had an um, engineering physics degree. So I worked in. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's my youngest son. That's what he's doing right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I did that in college because I wanted to get a good education, you know, right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So came out to California, got a job, met my husband. We got married, had kids, got a, you know, got a house, had kids. I was a stay-at-home mom for many years. Um, I didn't, you know, I was an engineer, but I never really liked going to work. I never liked the office thing. I was a clock watcher, and you know, <laughs> oh, yes. um, I was a tech writer for a while. Um, and uh, then I had my kids, and I was a stay-at-home mom for forever. Um, then I became a, a tutor um, in an alternative education program in the public school system for the, mm -hmm. um, the, the kids who aren't quite making it in the regular school system. So I tutored math and some other things there for a while. So that, then that was when I started making art again and started walking. And it was like I live in this area. And, mm -hmm. For whatever reason, it was like it really just started to strike me. Once I had the camera and I was looking through the screen, you know, it was like, wow, look at those colors. Wow, look at those, you know, look at that rock. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, so that's when it started, yep. really. For, for me, me, it was always like, again, using my iPhone, shooting all the sunrises. Mm -hmm. Like I became obsessed mm -hmm. with the sunrises and over the, the lake. And you do start noticing things differently. And that is often a precursor to getting into painting, mm -hmm. taking all of that information. I even think just the act of snapping the shot right. reinforces yeah. it, right? So you you're, you're, framing. Necessarily... you're, framing. Yeah. you're thinking on, you're thinking subconsciously about yeah. composition when you frame, right? Mm -hmm. you, you may never look at the shot again, and, but it, it's still there somehow. It's like in your little Rolodex up here and it does tend to come out in the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I, you know, as I've been developing my, um, um, my process here and um, this whole being an artist thing, thinking about what, 
you know, why do I make art? What do I do? You know, I sort of thought, well, what I'm trying to do, I think, or at least it informs what I'm doing, because it's so hard to really pin it down, Yes, um, is to kind of capture that moment. What is it that made me take that photo? You know, right. you know exactly what, what did I see? What did I experience? What did I feel? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> it is, that is a tough one. You know, people are always saying artists need to know their whys. Like, right. why do you do this? Why do you do yeah. this? And it's like, sometimes you're right. It is really tough to pin down um, exactly why we do what we do. You know, right. not that's a, an, easier, an easier way in is something that Louise Fletcher taught me, which was to curate what you like without asking why you like it. So it might be a bunch of photographs. It might be a bunch of paintings. It might be, I don't know, whatever. Curate those things. And once you see what you like, then you ask yourself, why you like them mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. start to draw the connections between the things that you like so maybe it's texture maybe texture comes out for you and that's something you mm -hmm. see so instead of going at it asking the question why to start mm -hmm. with let's just uh ask yourself what what am i noticing and and she's a big one of making mood boards or um keeping a journal of those things images or you know on your phone you've got an album of things things i things i Thanks like far. i don't know why i like them yeah <laughs> And then trying to figure that out. Um, and I think it's a process, too. I don't think we just wake up like, oh, yeah, that's it. I know why. No, I'm, I'm always impressed when artists can say <clears throat> exactly why they paint. Mm -hmm. And I often mm -hmm. think, too, it's going to change. Your reasons, mm -hmm. your why is going to change as, as your practice changes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, very much so. Bringing up Louise Fletcher, that reminds me, too, that Early on, when I started making art, I had a sense of it being as like a selfish thing to do. Yeah. You know, so, and it's like, oh, how can I spend money on this when there's all these problems in the world? And, you know, and I, you know, should keep tutoring and, mm -hmm. you know, um, how should I spend my time? And then I, I Googled, I Googled, is making art selfish? And what popped up was an Art Juice podcast. Oh, oh. Uh, and it, which had the title, is making art selfish. Wow. And that was the first time I found them in that podcast. Mm. And I listened to it and I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, they had some, you know, good answers as mm -hmm. to one of the things that I remember that they mentioned was that if you do it, then you give other people permission to do it. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I think that's, that's a really um, valid um, reason. I, I think too, yeah, we have to remind ourselves, and I come back to this all the time, and I'm not not um, ever speaking down to people who golf and ski, but I don't golf and ski. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. there are other expensive hobbies that, pe hobbies that people have, and they don't ask themselves, is it guilty for me to buy an yeah. annual ski pass to Whist Whistler right. and go skiing? They don't say, is it, you know, do I, should I feel guilty in enjoying my afternoon on the golf course? And so it's interesting mm -hmm. that it so often comes up for artists that we feel we need to justify the money and the time we spend on our art. Um, I, I'm just curious about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, the, other, the other answer is I used to, this is all in jest, but I was a, um, a very hardcore knitter for many, many years. I don't knit as much now that I paint because you can only do, you need your hands. <laughs> For, can't do them both simultaneously and there was a meme that was going around among, in the knitting community and it was I paint so I don't kill people oh. the idea being oh. that it, it helps with you know it right. helps oh, with yeah. mental yeah. health yeah. and mental wellness and so you know it's kind of the same for painting right if I'm having a stressful day I go into the studio and all of a sudden three hours later my shoulders have dropped six inches I'm breathing more fully and I'm feeling better so yeah. that's an excellent reason to paint too or to create it's uh, yeah I, I I sometimes will flip it and because I I think like you darling I had many years of not painting like decades right and then sometimes I'll ask myself well what would life be like if I never painted again and it's almost unfathomable mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. the thought and what like just how detrimental that would be even to your own kind of mental health and you know your purpose on this planet and and using what you have to make the best of your life not having that would be unthinkable mm -hmm. right so, 
sometimes flipping it on its head. We've had some comments go by quickly. Did yes. anybody catch them? Yeah, you know, one, of, one of them was we're also putting beautiful things out into the world. So when we create, we're making things that weren't there before. And those, we're sharing those. We're not hiding those in our studio. We're sharing them with the world by being on Instagram. And then Rena also said too, we all we do send ourselves on a lot of guilt trips. And and we need to stop doing that. So okay, good point, one. Rena. Do you think male artists ask themselves this, or is this a female artist thing? Not to be stereotypical, but I wonder. I don't actually know a lot of male artists. Mm -hmm. Douglas, tell us. Douglas, Douglas, is he on? Douglas are, are, are you guilty? <laughs> what do you feel guilty, do you feel guilty about? Because <laughs> I think, I, I wonder if it is a female thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what did Bonnie I, say? Oh, my glasses. Douglas feels, Douglas says he feels guilty. Bonnie says no. Do you know what? Part of the problem, though, is <laughs> when you ask these questions and when you go online and you see who's participating, it's not an unbiased sample because no. <laughs> we, we are interacting with a lot of other women artists online because yeah. those are the people that we find mm -hmm. online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had that conversation in certain courses before. Why is it more women taking these online courses than men? That might just be our experience with the courses we're taking. So I always have to, you know, I, I always feel a little, um, you know, cautious about asking those questions about men and women because we have a different sample perhaps. Um, and Douglas says he's always asking why I keep creating. Do you why are you creating? Type it in, Douglas. We'll wait. And <laughs> like, why are you creating? He just can't stop. Well, there, that's that a is. valid reason. That is. I mean, it's part of who you are, too, right? <laughs> and I find it so interesting, Darlene, that, I mean, I'm late, late to all of this. I'm not like you guys were. I didn't start creating at a younger age and then put it on the shelf for a while for a career. I just started recently, like seven years ago. So six or seven years ago. Um, and I just find it's really interesting that you could have something that you wanted to do for so long in you guys' case, and then you didn't do it, and now you do it again. And for me, I didn't even know that I wanted to do it. Yeah, I can't say that I really knew that I wanted to do it all those years. It was kind of something I had done. And, um, you know, like I said, I still enjoyed going to art museum, museums and looking at art and um, always appreciate it when I'm out in some kind of a, um, you know, um, art show or whatever. Um, but then, yeah, the, the, the desire to start making things did come back. With, you know, once I had time and wasn't, once I wasn't so involved in the creating that goes along with parenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, are you, mm -hmm. are you talking to us from your studio space? Yes, I am. I'm in um, a bedroom that used to be my son's bedroom. Okay. Um, like many I'm very so are. Studio so I can show you. This is, I just kind of laid out some of my art. I, I love know. your paintings. I yeah. was in your website. I love your work. You have um, such a rich, rich color. You know, except, you know the colors you know, are really it's interesting rich. because I never thought of myself as liking red. <laughs> um. Tilt down. We're just seeing the. Okay. Oh, there we okay. go. So, there we go. Yeah. Have you got a. Uh, Okay, so okay. is that a wall that you've put plastic on? That's right. Yeah, yeah, because I made a mess. So, um, Good idea. this is kind of weird, the angle. So, oh, and just oh, your hexagon. So yeah, my uh, hexagon. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my, um, this is kind of a weird thing. That's my most recent one, and I think it's done. Yeah, um, I'd say. Because mm -hmm. I look at it and I can't. I just think I would mess it up. I'm at that point where <laughs> more to do. So, nothing more to do. The yeah. colors are gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. So, so yeah, this is my space, um, my desk, and I, I'm a sticky person. Oh, yeah, I write me too. Lots I love post-it notes. Austin Kleon. There's a lot of them. Um, Brian Rutenberg. Um, just whatever, you know. Have you discovered Rick Rubens, the creative actor? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I could like write I've his quotes a, down all day. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bunch of his up here too. After I read that book, um, and I recently there was a great article this morning about um, you know who Brian Eno yes. is. Yes. Okay. There's going to be a documentary about him in the coming year. I think it's just the article was about um, 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 it being at premiering at Sundance. I think. And anyways, it's really interesting because 
there's AI technology behind it. And it's like every time somebody watches it, it's slightly different mm -hmm. because it takes the same information and just kind mm -hmm. of sifts it around. And he, he thinks, he, I mean, he's all in with that idea. He thinks that's cool. But um, one, one thing that he said about, um, he's a really, he, he's really into nature. Okay, which you wouldn't necessarily think, I don't know, about Brian Eno. He seems very techy yeah. and tech savvy yeah. and all that. But um, let's see, what did he... He said, having a good time consists of the right mixture of expectations and surprise. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he says, I want art to be like sitting by a river. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was just so... <laughs> yeah. And interesting in that art is something that is common mm -hmm. you see art and you experience it in the same way that we see nature experience nature the same way we meet people and you know experience our relationships with people interesting because i i was yeah. also getting from that quote it was making me think about the ai aspect of it where the river flows by and it it's it's a river it's always recognizable as a river but that idea that you mentioned about it changes and you experience it a little bit differently each yeah time. yeah it's yeah right 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 and um a mixture of expectation and surprise i like that too because um you know your art can't just be you know um uh, relaxing nature you know that gets kind of boring after a while or even when you're out hiking or whatever you you, yeah, it's the surprises that really catch your eye, and um, those are the things that you remember. That sunset, mm -hmm. or you know, that you know, group of flowers, or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that's the part of painting that keeps us coming back to mm -hmm. that. You know, yes, you go in for your studio time and you're doing what you're doing, and then all of a sudden you discover something or things go a different direction that you absolutely would not have planned. But that's almost the hook that we're coming back. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Because you don't know what's what's going to be new. No, and you want to yeah. be open to that. You want to be open to those yeah. shifts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Bonnie says surprises equal differences. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Um, Good point. When Barb and I were in New York, we were we went to the MoMA and we saw the most incredible um, AI painting. And you may have heard of it. We've shared it online. It's a whole wall. Like, it's got to be what, like 40 by 40 feet. It's massive. Yeah. It's, it's, it's digitally created. I guess they must project it, but it looks like it's coming from behind. It looks alive. And it looks alive. Yeah. And they, yeah. the starting point, the input, input to create for the algorithm to create this moving art that changes. It's like water flowing over the edges. It's like fire. It's like volcano erupting is all of the work or a big portion of the work that they have um, in their collection at the moment. So they oh. put that input and then they have a starting point and there's some algorithm behind it that just changes the pixels just move. And it was totally mesmerizing. You had no idea what you were going to see next. Yeah. Um, it was amazing. Oh, it and, like and you it. could have sat there all day. You could have easily sat there all day. And it, yes, a lot of it was bright colors and almost like lava coming up. But then you'd see like a snippet of drawing. Do you remember when it would kind of go black and white? Yeah. And it'd be like, there's drawings in there. And then they kind of change. And it's like, eh, oh, beautiful. That's a, that's a great mm -hmm. use of AI. Right, 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 right. So we can't just pan it. No, no. You no. know, universally. No. Yeah. And I mean, there could be great moments of inspiration for artists sitting and looking at things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's moving the whole time, so mm -hmm. you don't get a, it's it's more like watching a video than looking at a still mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it and was they pair it, of course, with really beautiful yeah. Zen music. Yes. So the whole it's oh. like just this whole experience, <laughs> and and just that's, you know, with people around you, and you're in this beautiful location. So it, it it's it's an immersive experience which is different than looking at a painting, a static. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or mm -hmm. sitting by a river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sitting by, by a river, oh. yeah, yeah. Did you read um, Louise Fletcher's uh, newsletter about her visit to yes. Roma? <laughs> and I thoughts? I didn't get it yet. Um, okay, this was a I, while I, ago. You know what, I, I did, I, so her, uh, it was just a couple weeks ago and she mm -hmm. talked about how she, she had a very angry reaction to it because uh, yeah, for yeah. her seeing 
art, an artist's work, seeing it all one piece next to a different artist next to a different artist wasn't the same as seeing a collection of the work. Um, and, you know, I, I, I did understand that. Like, mm -hmm. to, I, I, we, we didn't try to see everything when we went mm -hmm. because we know how overwhelmed we get. And there were a couple of rooms there, like the Rothko room that we just made a beeline to first thing in the morning, the second time we were there to kind of stand there and mm -hmm. see all of the work together and see it kind of communicating. But um, I, I did appreciate mm -hmm. her. I, I think mm -hmm. that these kinds of big museums are great for as an entry point, you know, mm -hmm. as and not trying to see everything in one day. So trying to decide, okay, we're going to the fourth floor and, and we're going to spend two hours and we're going to walk into rooms and paintings that we want to see. We're going to look at and that's great. But um, yeah, I, I I was I was surprised, but then not surprised after I read read the whole article that she wrote. Yeah, yeah I get exhausted going to museums like that, and I've come to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to just stake out one little area give a quick wave to the rest of it and because it's just too much. It is. It's a mm -hmm. sensory overload and mm -hmm. you, almost, you just, you can't absorb it. You can't respond to the, the pieces, I think, the way that you could if you were just looking at a couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even a lot of work by the same person. And so... Like a retrospective of somebody. Yeah, or the Cecily Brown exhibition. That oh! We, we were just in a space and we saw all of her work because it hits you on a different mm -hmm. level, right? It, you know, it's some, um, I hate, I hate describing art as uh, having a visceral response to it because it's, it's very cliche, but you do a sense that, you know, you, you kind of feel it in a different way. Um, you're walking around, there's pieces on either side of you. You're seeing work that's created at over maybe 10 years of an artist's life, as opposed to just that one little snapshot. And I found that much, a much more compelling way to look at art than, to wander through and see one of everybody for mm -hmm. sure. And talk mm -hmm. about expectation versus surprise. We did not expect to walk, to stumble into this gallery. And when we did, it was almost more potent than had we said, okay, we're going to go see that show. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was like Dorothy when she opens the door and all of a sudden everything's technicolor yeah. in uh, the land of Oz. Yeah. That's how it felt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mm -hmm. missed that yeah, comment. Well, um, Rena, I read, Rena said, says, I read that newsletter, I get it, and I do prefer immersing myself in one artist at a time, but the theme approach that MoMA adopted for its permanent exhibitions does have value, and it is enriching in a different way, Absol absolutely. Um, I, 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 I get that too, and I think it serves a different purpose, and for those of us who don't have access to that sort of, an ex that sort of um, a museum or a gallery on a regular basis, that's the only way we can see it. Right, like I, we don't have a, we don't, the Vancouver Art Gallery, <laughs> no. they try, but we're small, you know, we don't have those kinds of collections and, and I can't get a, if I got a membership there, I, I wouldn't probably use it. No. If I had, a, if I lived in New York and had a membership to the <gasps> MoMA, I could see oh. myself, I could see myself going once a week and just yeah. spending an hour. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's like the people that here who have Disneyland passes. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, okay, this is right. not our, how close are you to Disneyland? Well, <laughs> you know, to be honest, I haven't been for decades myself, but you know, it's, um, I can hear the Disneyland fireworks at night. No, that you're that close. close. Yeah, no. yeah. But I mean, it costs a fortune to go to yeah. Disneyland now, so, yeah. um, but. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did way back. Like in the day I remember going in my early 20s with a friend Disney World yes and Florida. then so this would have been late 80s early 90s and it was still a hundred dollars mm -hmm. a day and mm -hmm. back then that was, was a lot of money like my rent was three hundred dollars a month so a hundred dollars a day to go to Disney World was a lot yeah. yeah and then you're buying stuff and eating and doing all the other stuff that you need to do when you're there gotta get souvenirs yeah can't leave without them. Absolutely. Hats and t-shirts, right, Barb? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Socks. Stickers. Um, I don't think we've talked about your process yet. Uh, it would be kind of neat to oh, see how you approach a no. You know, um, lately I've been using Rob Zott's method of starting. Um, yep. Very small to large and you have lines that connect this, you know, the different edges and work small and then develop a surface and then 
go from there. So that seems to be working for me. But that has been something that I struggle with. And, you know, often I spend a lot of time time on a, a piece and it changes yep. <laughs> it changes a lot um and i i am not the kind of person who can work on something to completion i'll work on it for a while then i'll let it set mm -hmm. and then who knows where i'll have an idea about it mm -hmm. you know who knows where could be anywhere could be in the car yep. when i'm driving to the market could be in the middle of the night when i wake up it could be you know when I'm working on some other piece or whatever, and then it'll take me in a direction. And then very often it's like I get to a point and then, then I get that idea and then it's almost done. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how it happens. None of us <laughs> I, I, really how it happens. I don't, I, I, you know, um, that's something I, I watch. I watch like Isabel, how she works. Yep. And I know she does many layers yep. and, you know, Same. her, pro her work changes throughout her process quite a bit. Um, one thing that I struggle with a lot is color. Um, and how that's oh. also another, another funny thing that happens. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing with color. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I even understand paint? And then, um, then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> level, yeah. you know, yeah. I put something, it, it, yeah, yeah. I like to use collage. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times um, I like what I do. Um, you know, like I use, I, you know, uh, tam tamara, tamara, tamara. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> um, I know you use the blue paper towels a lot. Um, I use the brown paint paper. Okay. Um, you know, like um, um, this stuff. You oh, know. Bake, baking parchment. Well, and, well, I, actually, this is painter's okay. paper that you buy. At, like, Yeah, maybe it is. But like, I'll put my extra paint down yep. on this. Right. And a lot of times I end up using what I put down um, as collage. And yeah, that's what I'll do with a piece if I don't know what I'm doing um, on it. I'll take some collage and put some work down. I also, also like to use text from old books. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. Where I put that down and then cover it up. And then eventually some of that shows through. Um, oftentimes I will look at photos that I have mm -hmm. for inspiration. Once in a while, I'll um, I'll use it pretty directly, mm -hmm. um, but but not always. It's usually just a kind of all comes together. Mm -hmm. um, these all these images that I've seen over all these, you know, miles and miles that I've hiked and mm -hmm. thousands of photos that I've taken. Mm -hmm. Thousands. <laughs> so do you, yeah. Have do you work on more than one painting at a time? Then are you um, all at work in series or you know? Yeah, you know I kind. Of to consider this group that I have here kind of a series. That's something that I was trying to do recently is to, you know, um, work on more than one at a time. When I first started, it was more like I would just work on one and that was so important and critical. Yes. And, um, <laughs> it, can, it can get overly precious. Yeah. And now it's sort of like, oh, I got to put that one aside. Let me start yeah. something else. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm working... Yeah, I started off with the 12 by 12s and mm -hmm. um, I've done some smaller pieces and I'm working gradually working larger. I like working on um, the wood panels more than canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the canvas can be just, especially as you get bigger, it gets mm -hmm. springier. It's like working on a trampoline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really do like subtracting and removing and a lot of times I'll get pretty brutal with it. Yeah. With, um, um, either with the sander or even with alcohol yeah. i'll just spray it with alcohol and what does that start do? It like off. If you spray it, just, it, it takes the paint off it'll help you can take the paint off and it, it just messes it up <laughs> okay but, but it depends on how you use it if you use it carefully yeah. you can take off a light mm -hmm. layer if you just spray the whole thing and start rubbing you'll get a lot more off well, so what I started using, um, we discovered this when we went to Rob's workshop in New York, and mm -hmm. everybody was using oils, so we couldn't use the juice mm -hmm. to take no. things off. And so we started using this um, open acrylic 
medium gloss mm -hmm. and I use it the same way he uses juice now I put it on my paper towels and I scrub back and mm -hmm. into it mm -hmm. but and, and it's been great you go through a lot of it though yeah. um, and it doesn't come in this is the biggest size bottles I can get is which is fine because you need to be able to hold it in your hands mm -hmm. um, but you know I was gonna ask you too because of the subtraction it limits how many pieces you can work on at a time so before I before I was doing a lot of subtracting with medium and really trying to time the drying to get it ex you know with, with subtraction and acrylics it's not like oils where you can go in the next day and still be able to pull things off there's kind of a time there's a there's a critical time um, for what the way I use it anyway mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so um, if I was if I work on too many panels at the same time by the time I go back and start subtracting from panel one panel four is really dry and I can't get the same effects anymore. So it's limiting, it's limited me to not being able to work in series quite the mm -hmm. same way. And I was wondering mm -hmm. if that's maybe part, part of it for you as well. Yeah. I don't work that, that, um, meticulously. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm, it's more of a, just a big mess, <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah. And you know, I, I do get, I find that I get bored mm -hmm. if I do the same thing over and over again. So I, um, I do like to change it up. Um, and I do take, you know, sometimes I, I don't work every day. Mm -hmm. Um, very often it's just, you know, a short period of time and then I'll do, go do something else and then I'll work for a short period of time. Um, what about okay so you did cvp so mm -hmm. you might be in the same boat that i am where now it's my preference is square substrates <laughs> like that got me hooked on squares mm -hmm. yeah, yeah right. i like squares and i don't know if it's so much because of cvp but it's as i've worked with them even with the larger ones for there's something about the square shape that i really mm -hmm. like but i do have some pieces that are um are rectangles I just got some bigger ones mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah I'm looking forward to, to working on those too but yeah there's something about the square that I really like I don't know what it is though it's yeah it, the, it's, it surprised it's, me yeah me too because you almost become mm -hmm. like that that would be what I would gravitate towards until I started noting the totem ones <laughs> which yeah, is like yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, do you have a favorite size like a what sort of well i'm about? starting to, like i said i'm starting to like bigger sizes so like right now i'm um working more like 24 by 24 which for me is larger but i know it's really not large um <clears throat> but i don't have that much space yeah to work in well you, you see it's pretty decent size space it's hard to tell but um yeah like, that's actually pretty good um yeah. I just have so much stuff, so many different materials. And I find that if I, if it's not in viewing, then I'm not going to use it. Out of sight, out of mind. You know, if it's not, if it's not visible, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then like a year later, you're like, oh, I didn't know I had all this stuff. It's all buried underneath here. I'd also like to spend some more time working on paper. I like what you're doing, Tamara, with your um, paper pieces. Um, yeah, I, I like oh, her. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. Um, and they're small. <coughs> and I'm only working at five by five inches on these guys. Isn't that great? It's that size. You know what? It's it's a mm -hmm. warm up. Some days it's a warm up to doing anything bigger. Uh, some days it's I've got 45 minutes in the studio and that's it. And I've made something and great. And it's not precious at all. You know, they look much, much bigger. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, even though I'm looking at them like this, you know, on a tiny little screen, they, I could easily see that they could be a 12 by 12 or a, yeah. you know, 16 by 16. So well, and who knows, maybe that will, there'll be some inspiration for scaling up, but I'm really just treating them all as one and done. It's mm -hmm. done. Move on. To mm -hmm. space. And um, I do have an idea of how I'd like to display them when they're all done. I think it could be quite interesting to see a big 10 oh, by yeah. 10 array of yeah, them in be. different different arrangements and stuff but mm -hmm. um I, i'm a big fan of having two different sizes and two different sort of substrates because you've always got something mm -hmm. to do then mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the studio, you can find something to focus on mm -hmm. yeah i really like the totems too i think those are really in an interesting shape 
I uh, love the totems mm -hmm. and I want to do more of the, I mean, I have a bunch that I haven't even started sitting there waiting. Um, but yeah, there's just something about the shape. They're not, they're, some of them are huge, like six yeah. feet tall, 12 inches wide, which is a lot, but they well, don't feel yeah. intimidating because, you know, you're working on such a, a different scale. A lot. I would love to do a really large piece. I just can't do that at oh, well, the you know, world. Totems are the skinny, really oh. tall ones. So they might be like 48 yeah. by eight. Here's one behind me, and which has been there for weeks. <laughs> I think, Barb, you tend to work on them in the vertical format, but then they can be hung in that long, skinny, horizontal format, like over a bed or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But there's, and there's another artist, Miriam, um, she does them, but she puts them on a stand. So they're almost like a sculpture. Oh. So I saw one that she had actually just sold um, out of her gallery in Toronto. And I thought, what an amazing idea. So the totem is on a stand. So it is like a sculpture, but it's a painting. <laughs> and I think the possibilities with something like that are really exciting. What about, yeah. so I need to about the back of it? Does she paint the back as well? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick her brain. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you could do? You could take two totems, the same size of the wooden ones, and you could Stick glue them, them together. together. You could mm -hmm. make a yeah. cube. That would be so cool. Ooh, be like actually. An, be like an obelisk, right? Yeah. Then, you could, like, then you could, like, rotate it. <laughs> Put it on a little roll. Yes. Yeah. And then, depending yeah. how you feel, it's, it's art that can kind of suit mm -hmm. your mood. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is why I need a bigger studio. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't do that yeah. here. You hear that, Roman? <laughs> <laughs> We're like traumatized today. <laughs> but uh, long story. Sure. So um, you have work in a local gallery, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to tell us about that. Um, we, you and I. Swing and Vine or what's it called? It's called the uh, Linden Twig, That's and it's it. in the city of Tustin, which is right next to Orange, Old Town Tustin, which is just a, a lovely little intersection, a few blocks going each way with shops and restaurants. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little like boutique art gallery. And, you know, she sells home goods. And she also, um, I just met her, uh, I think they opened last year. And um, yeah, so she's selling a variety of things there and she's very welcoming to artists and you know there's a, several other artists that have work there and um yeah so in february i'll be one of the featured artists there and um there's had there's an opening on february 3rd and my son is a musician and he's going to be playing guitar and singing one of my sons uh -huh. at the event 12 to 3 in the afternoon okay Carrie's gonna go she's see gonna you. Go. Have you met Carrie? Have you I have, Carrie I have not, I have not, but um, I'd love to meet her. Yeah, yeah, come say hi. <laughs> it's a lovely little place. I don't know if she's been to Tustin before, but it's, yeah, it's a great gallery and um, um, the owner, Amy, is very nice. And I walked in there and um, the first time and she said, you know, I introduced introduced myself as an artist. She says, "Oh, do you want to show here?" She hadn't even looked at my work, and I'm like, "Don't you want to see what I make?" <laughs> you know, that's I like the sound of kind her. of a. But yeah, no, she she's great, and she's um, she did like my work a lot, and she's uh, very easy to work with, and um, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I have a few a few things there right now, um, and we'll be bringing some more at the end of the month. That's what. Wonderful. Is this the yeah. first place you've shown or have you been showing regularly? Um, well, you know, no, I, I haven't sold much work and um, haven't shown much. My first, the first place I showed was at the Bookman in Orange, which is a used bookstore. And um, the owner, David Hess, um, likes to support local artists and he'll let you hang up your work there and have a little opening event. And he doesn't charge any commission if you sell anything. Great. Which is, I didn't sell anything when I was there, but... Um, but it was kind of like the first time that I introduced myself as an artist to mm -hmm. my family and friends. Mm -hmm. And they all, you know, a lot of people came and supported me. And um, yeah, it was a real turning point in just my being able to um, think of myself as an artist. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a declaration. And I think that yeah. that's a good thing to do. I, I know 
I don't know. I always think it's good to get your art out there anyway. Yeah. Like get your art out in so that other eyes can see it besides yourself. Yeah. And, it's, <laughs> and you know, a small it's not circle an easy of easy thing to do. It's really not easy at first. No, it's not. It's no. like standing outside in your underwear. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, I, all I got was support yeah. from family and friends and, um, you know, it just, um, has just made me feel a little bit better about doing this not i mean not that i should feel bad right but uh just a little um little shy yeah. um yeah it's it's yeah hard when you have something that's because it's personal right it's and, personal and people outside of your home and outside of your really close circle don't see that you're doing it and the only way they know is if you tell them but it feels very vulnerable mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. know people what you're working on right right yes very very much so but it's uh, it's out there now, so <laughs> and now take it back, and it, it makes it easier to do it another time, right? And now I'm on no brush required. <laughs> no, well you made now, it now. Oh, this oh. is the peak, Darlene. I tell I you, know, this is, no, can't I can't get much higher than this. Really, this is you're starting off very well. I just want to thank you both too very much, um, and I admire what you're doing. You're both um, hardworking artists. I like your own individual styles and. Um, um, it's, it's just I'm really glad that I found your your activity whatever this, is. Whatever this I can't we wait to call it it's not, it's not a podcast right but oh, almost not, almost I call I, I hashtag it podcasts of Instagram because I don't know what yeah. else to call it either yeah. it's a visual podcast it is. we could create something different well I'll tell you there's nothing better than the artist community that we've met mm -hmm. that's for sure we've met just wonderful people yeah it's true. Yeah, it's the please. only thing that keeps me on Instagram these days. Right, right. Oh, and and my I'm, friends are all here. I am <laughs> if it, I'm almost like on an Instagram strike. I just have been ignoring it for weeks and weeks. And you know what? It's okay. But I do like popping in to see what people are doing. Right, so. right. And it is really nice when you can connect like this. So yeah. um, there is a way to connect. There so, is, for yeah. sure. And, and you know, as long as you... Person. As long as you use these tools in the right way, they can yeah. be very positive. It's very yeah. true. Mm -hmm. So, do you have effort. any? Do you have any upcoming um, courses that you're taking, or workshops, or places, trips that you're going on that are art related? Anything on you the know? Front? Right now, <laughs> I've just been overwhelmed with thinking about first this, and then my show. It's show. It's not really a show, but it's um, a it show. is. It's a my, show. We're calling it a show. So having my work there, so I haven't, um, you know, thought much further than that. I do have some panels that I have to get to. I want to spend time working, yeah. really. Um, I need to, you know, keep keep that going. And that's very hard to do when you're trying to market and connect and talk to people and all that. So just trying to get that in order and, you know, make the art making be the, the center keep at the center for sure yeah yeah so after after february or into february i hope to get started making some more things and see where that goes mm -hmm. so yeah. and i'll um let life unfold right. see where it takes right? right i always things happen the way they need to happen yeah and you just never know when the next opportunity is going to present itself right you just you just keep working and the opportunities show up yep. and you say yes yeah. and uh, yeah that's that is true once you start saying yes then you meet people and then things happen and you know and it's yeah. fun yeah yes yeah, yeah. it's, it's got to fun. be fun otherwise we wouldn't be doing it mm -hmm. and i hope you both come to southern california sometime we would yes. like so, to yeah we Good. talked about it we did absolutely like put it on the agenda there's, 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 <laughs> we'll add it to our list of places that we need to go together <laughs> we're good traveling companions yeah and we I, like I, to travel the last time i was in canada was when i went to niagara falls oh. as a child oh so <laughs> a while ago i'm um i think a trip is due yeah yeah oh so. for sure you know we're on opposite I, sides of the country yeah i do know that yeah yeah so with, with what little i know about canada unfortunately so it's big mm -hmm. it's a big yeah, country it would be, yeah it would take <laughs> it would be a long flight from ontario to to uh, bc mm -hmm. yeah well yeah. it has been so nice getting to know you more darling yeah really, really same nice. here. 
same here. I'm I'm really glad that it's not such a one-way connection anymore. So yeah. I felt I knew so much about you, but it's nice to actually talk to you and mm -hmm. you know connect this way. And know, yeah, and find oh, we know people by our um, Instagram name. Yeah, handles, right. Everybody who's <laughs> listening or sees this, you know, it's like so many of your names I recognize, yeah. and you know. Pretty cool. So please, please say hi. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, if you're, we're gonna we're gonna sign off in a mm -hmm. second. I will save this replay, and it'll show up on all of our feeds. Um, and if you're if you're watching it on the replay, make sure that you go over to Darlene's Instagram, take a look at her art, get to know her a little bit more that way, and um, have a great watch for the stories. Yeah, watch the for the stories. Stories. Oh, they're coming, Darlene. You know she does this, right? Oh, <laughs> she does it outtakes and then she yeah i do i try and find well i'm i'm very kind i try and find dumb ones yes. of us not our guests <laughs> our guest gets spared well, but i can find usually oh i've like doing some us. weird things with my hands oh. so well, for you, us, it's fake. It's fake <laughs> you you wouldn't believe half the the really goofy ones she doesn't even send she sends them to me and says look what you're doing with your nose <laughs> <laughs> or like, like utter shock utter horror <laughs> Looks up, it's like, I don't remember you doing that during the conversation. <laughs> when were you horrified? <laughs> oh, oh, dear. And then I just look like a dork, That's okay. so. That's okay. That's okay. All right, well, thank, That's thank you so much, Darlene, for, for volunteering to come and chat with us well, today. And thanks for great chat with me. And um, happy painting. Yes, and Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And yes, Val, watch for the bloopers. bloopers. They'll be in the story. That's what the word is, bloopers. I couldn't come up with okay. that. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, guys. Have a good rest of your See day. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.